Okay, so this uh, video is about money, karma, and uh, guilt. Money, karma, and guilt, and abundance. Money, karma, guilt, and abundance. And the thing of um, feeling like there's something financially unresolved in one's consciousness. It could be to do with taxes or with returning goods or whatever it is or or um and and the thing of resolving uh, karma i mean the, what i mean by karma is like sometimes life gives one very difficult situations with um things like uh, taxes benefits uh, goods all kinds of things and uh and it seems like the easy route is to do the easy route um, shall we say, and rather than the, the route that causes more pain. Uh, I mean, an example would be, um, uh, you know, um, I mean, I had this, you know, when I was on benefits and I was doing all the spiritual work and I said I got well and I had a freedom pass. Uh, this is true, uh, which meant that I, I, you know, I had free travel while I was uh, uh, diagnosed as ill and disabled. And I'm working the spiritual program. I'm, I'm now super healthy. I'm, all these miracles are happening with my health. I'm sort of bouncing around with energy. And uh, I'm claiming uh, benefits for being disabled. And I get, I get free travel. You know, I spoke to my mentor and I said, look, I'm feeling actually really healthy. And I don't feel it's no longer spiritually honest for me to do it and it was like my ego is going well that's thousands and thousands of pounds as soon as you say to them you're okay you know you're not going to get anything they'll just strike you off and i do remember so i told them like i don't need benefits anymore i'm fine but that was that wasn't as hard as letting go of their free travel in london which is like so expensive you know unlimited free travel um so it's worth thousands of pounds so I just wrote to the, the local council and said, I'm, I'm, I'm well, I'm happy to give up my freedom pass. And uh, it took them a while. I hope they didn't get the message, but they got it. And just said, thanks. But I, I did read something. There was an acknowledgement in her. It was cryptically there that most people wouldn't do what you're doing. And I thought, oh, that's, uh, that's, 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 uh, that's uh, lovely. I mean, I guess most people wouldn't volunteer to give it up. So, you know, and I got that, I thought, well, the reason of doing the spiritual right thing quite often, I mean, what is the spiritual right thing is another thing, is that if you hold guilt, or if you feel dishonest, or you hold the vibration of guilt, and you're not feeling clean around money, or your dealings with governments or other people, then that guilt uh, creates fear and has limiting beliefs and creates a kind of a resonance or a vibration, which will mean that uh, it will seem that more fearful and difficult circumstances seem to come one's way. You could say it's not a good vibration for uh, financial abundance uh, is one way of saying it. Oh, well, just spiritual connection probably. But in terms of money, if you're interested in money, um, you know, um, the actual right thing to do would be what's in the interest of the highest good. If it's with a friend, if it's with the government, is it right to give up the benefits or not give up the benefits? Is it in the interest of the highest good? I think uh, the 12 steps, in 12 steps though, another thing I think can offset it is doing good deeds or giving money to charity or doing service or helping others. I do believe that does offset the negative karma if one has done things that one isn't too willing to undo. Uh, so, uh, and that happens a lot in 12 steps, you know, um, sometimes they'll say, look, uh, I understand it may, for whatever reason, you don't wanna um, give the money back, but uh, you could give some money to charity or you could do volunteer and do some more service and good in the world and help some others. So that is one way of earning good karma to negate uh, bad karma. Um, and, um, uh, but what, I mean, the, the big book has an interesting thing, which is the 12-step uh, text. Sometimes it's not the right thing to, to fess up if you've got children or whatever, or dependents and family, and to own up and then to, like, yeah, like if, if, it, if, I'd, uh, if I'd robbed a bakery like a month ago, 
and um and but i've got three kids that need me to look after them and i'm their sole source it might not be best to own up to the police like uh i'm the one who robbed the bakery last week uh it might be good to wait uh or find another solution uh, so that that is a context that it's not always the right thing of being literally now uh, rectifying those things but you know just to see is there any guilt in me around money um and to clear that or any limiting beliefs is there any fear that i've done a, a financial action uh which would have a karmic president in the universe pray, i mean pray for miracles guidance sometimes it's good to seek practical advice solicitors accountants friends spiritual groups uh and and pray as well so um yeah i think the the, the way to see that is karma and if you look at Hawkins' work, past lives, sometimes things happen with money that seem very difficult. Um, uh, a good anti-karma prayer from Hawkins is, um, let's say I feel someone has robbed me of my money or been dishonest in their dealings with me. I could pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's been dis dishonest to others. I mean, Hawkins made this lovely joke, which was like, um, if you're what? If your wife leaves with another man and takes the Mercedes, just say that pays that karma off and, and laugh it off. You know, I mean, it's like, oh, that's good. Now uh, she's undone my karma uh, of the last lifetime of uh, running away from her when I was married to her and uh, taking taking the horse and cart or something in the previous life. So you, you're undoing the karma. That's called karmic undoing. You let it go the hard way.